Nishal Maheshwari is joining in uh, to give us his view. He's the CEO of Institutional Equities and Advisory of Centrum Broking. Nishal, hi, good morning. You know, uh, it, it is actually quite surprising to see the scale at which Grasim went and launched their paint business, right? I mean, just seeing what happened yesterday would sort of uh, uh, inculcate some fear in the incumbents for sure. But how do you see this entire thing play out? And for people who have a la fairly large position in names like Asian Paints, etc., what do you do? Do you churn out now? Uh, morning, Sonia. I think uh, uh, this was expected. Uh, you look at the Aditya uh, Birla uh, group, basically, Kumar Mangalam group. I think uh, they are large as far as all commodities are concerned and they are number one, number two players uh, everywhere. And I don't think so. They would uh, stop it until unless they hit a number. I'm saying number one would be a difficult one, but number two or number three, I'm saying in the top two or three players, they would want them want themselves to be there. And I think that's the kind of investment they have done. They have large pockets. So it was sort of expected. Now, look at the way the business is, basically. Initially, I think uh, Grassim will go after uh, price, uh, basically, because that's the way they will get market share. So in the short term, the whole industry will suffer as far as margins is concerned. Because till uh, Grassim uh, gets its market share or the targeted market share, it will continue to drive it and possibly take losses. That's a way, if you look at it, when Jio came into the uh, mobile market, it continued to drive it till it achieved a market share of 40%. So I think Grassim must have had some uh, target market share in its head. And basically, that's the way they are going to drive it. So in the short term, I think it's an avoid. Uh, uh, for the sector, wait for uh, better prices, even in Asian paints to uh, uh, buy back. So I think at the moment, I think uh, one can book profits in Asian paints. Okay, book some profits in Asian paints. Hi, Nishal. Good morning. Nishal, I want to ask you about Vodafone Idea as well as Indistars. But before that, let's play out this bite coming in from uh, Mr. Bidla himself. He sounded quite optimistic on Vodafone Idea and later we understood that they're going to be considering a fundraising plan as well. Let's hear him out and we'll come back and get your view. We remain very committed to Vodafone and like we've said in public domain, uh, uh, efforts are on to uh, get outside investors. Um, and, you know, and I don't know what's prompting your question. I think we remain as committed that, uh, to it as we have been in the past. Okay, all right. So that's... Uh... The word coming in uh, from the promoter himself saying that they remain committed and now they're looking at some fundraising as well. But they've got a mammoth debt in there. Uh, Nishal, how would you approach uh, Vodafone Idea? Uh, you know, do you think you would look to buy it? And also the other play that you have on Vodafone Idea is Indastars. Because if Vodafone Idea survives, then Indastars gets its uh, required money. Your view. So I think Indus, uh, Vodafone is an option value, basically. It is zero-one kind of a situation. I think they are sitting on such a pile of debt. Uh, it will be difficult for them to get through this uh, until unless they get massive investment. I think the management is looking for it and uh, they are clear themselves that they are not going to invest more. So I think it's a catch-22 kind of situation. As an investor, it's totally an option value. I, I wouldn't be saying that this is an investment uh, opportunity. So uh, uh, I'm saying line-hearted players can look at it and uh, maybe take some positions out there. Obviously, the upsides are huge. Uh, <coughs> get the right uh, investor amount of money they need to spend and all that. I think, uh, obviously, uh, Vodafone can be a multi-bagger from here if all things turn out right. But that's a very big if. Uh, I think uh, on the Indus Tower, uh, it's, a, again, same kind of a situation. Except for that, uh, it's cheap and uh, one can buy on tips. All right. Okay. Got that. Uh, Nichelle, hi, good morning. You know, let's just talk a little bit about banks. A uh, lot of conversation around that. Private bank, the rally uh, happened and uh, it's starting to fizzle already. I mean, it's not even a proper move, right? I'm talking about private banks there. PSUs, uh, and we'll put this out in a bit, but there are some downgrades from Goldman Sachs on names like SBI, etc. So just wanted uh, to understand what your top preference is in this space. Uh, morning, Prashant. Uh, I think uh, I would prefer the private sector banks, basically, and uh, that's what my uh, call has been. Uh, not worked out till now, uh, and PSUs have done really well. We were positive in PSUs last year, uh, but I think at some point in time, uh, most of them, the undervaluation is gone. Easy money has been made in the PSUs. 
Now, if they continue to perform, and uh, the question about PSUs is basically is those ROG, ROEs which they are showing in the few, last few quarters is this a sustainable ROE? That is the question basically, because uh, you have not seen one cycle after the 12 and 13 debacle. This is the first cycle where the uh, uh, asset side books are getting built up and uh, one should see through that cycle before saying that, yeah, it's a sustainable ROE. So I would avoid PSUs at the moment and uh, prefer the large cap banks. Our top pick there remains to be ICICI Bank, uh, Axis and HDFC in that uh, uh, sequence. Okay. Uh, I wanted your thoughts on a couple of these names in the defense slash space sector, right? After the 100% FDI in space sector was allowed yesterday, there were some of these companies that moved. Uh, you know, whether it's MTAR Tech, Data Patterns, Bharat Electronics, Sign DLM, the problem here is that valuations are very uncomfortable compared to historic. But do you see any scope here for retail investors? See, uh, uh, Sonia, the sector has got great potential, basically. Uh, there is no doubt about it. It's opened up to the private sector. And I think uh, as we go along, I think a lot of orders will flow. But uh, at the moment, I think they are discounting uh, way beyond uh, the foreseeable future. So that's why I think uh, it's a sort of an avoid. The only uh, stock which I think uh, I like there is BEL where there is a strong order book basically and uh, I think government's commitment uh, is also very high uh, uh, on that sector. So visibility is very high for BEL. So among the three, four of these stocks basically, uh, we would I would only prefer uh, BEL to be bought, but that too also at uh, uh, on a correction. Okay, so that is on, you'll buy these stocks on a correction, got it. Uh, very interestingly, uh, there's a lot that's happening in, uh, you know, this entire new age uh, technology space as well, right? This morning, City has initiated a buy on Honasa consumer. We've seen um, uh, Zomato at fresh highs. As of yesterday as well, Zomato hit a fresh record high. Anything in this space that you like? So, Honasa we don't cover, uh, but uh, yes, Zomato, PB Fintech uh, has been our uh, picks there. Uh, um, uh, similarly, basically, we like uh, uh, E-Mudra. That's another stock, basically, which we like. Uh, uh, but I think others have uh, run up quite a bit, basically. So avoid some of them, uh, like Paytm and all. We don't, uh, uh, I think it's a clear avoid out there. So we do not want to, uh, because their business model is still not clear. So we would want to avoid that. But I think these are two or three stocks which we prefer. Honasa. I think on a correction, one should look at it. It's uh, it's a uh, it's in an old industry, but uh, strong growth. So definitely, I think worth a look, uh, Honasa. Okay, all right. What about some of these aluminium names? You know, in India, from the listed companies, you have three basically to play. One is Nalco, which valuation-wise has gone out of whack. It's the highest I've seen in the last ten years or so. You have Vedanta that has promoter uh, end problems, uh, you know, at that level, but they're looking at sorting it out, and it's the cheapest. And you have Hindalco, which the street is wondering why they're raising this money from novelists. Among the three, what would your pick be? I think, Nigel, there it's a, it's very clear, basically, the other two have a lot of issues. So I think the top pick still remains to be Hindalco for us. Uh, yes, there is a question mark why they're raising that money, basically. But I think uh, 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 it's sort of a... Uh, what I understand uh, in my discussions with the management is sort of a war chest, basically, they are trying to build up and trying to see if they can get assets abroad. So uh, I think that's the way, basically, they want to go about. And uh, Novelis itself will become a separately listed company uh, on its own uh, and, and, and has its own strengths uh, and the war chest, basically. So uh, that's the way, basically, we look at it. So we are positive on Hindalco. Uh, obviously, Vedanta, because of its cheap, uh, the second pick and the third is obviously Nalco because of high valuation and uh, 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 checkered past. So that's the way basically we look at it. Uh, Nishal, I wanted your thoughts on, uh, you know, this whole NVIDIA, uh, uh, you know, boom that we've seen. Of course, for investors in India, you can participate in NVIDIA through some of these funds that have exposure to the US markets. But uh, what about the Indian AI-related stocks, right? Whether it's the tech names, uh, something like a Tata, Alexi, Persistent System, Scient, etc. Uh, do you think it makes sense to put more money to work there? 
So, uh, I do not have much handle on NVIDIA, but uh, I think it's a totally different thing, basically, because uh, it's into super chips. And uh, the Indian companies, uh, at best, if anybody has exposure to NVIDIA and has got some work to do with them, is basically on the embedded software. I don't know if any of these companies are involved there, but I think uh, some of the companies which we have named, uh, yes, uh, they are good at... Uh, uh, AI and uh, I think I would add uh, happiest minds also out there, which has got the highest amount of work in as far as AI is concerned. So uh, yes, AI is a big space. I think that's the next big uh, a, a space which is emerging. We are seeing that in the US and US has been a precursor to across the world for uh, technology. So here also, I think some of these companies will do much better, but I think uh, the work from there to flow uh, it is going to take a bit more time than uh, what we see today. Nishal, I wanted your thoughts on autos because, you know, the run has been pretty good. Most of these stocks are at record highs. And now some of these spaces like EVs are also doing very well. TVS, for example, is at a record high. Uh, any thoughts here? Uh, Sorry, I would want to continue basically holding these stocks. I think there is uh, a, a good way to go. You are just seeing the demand, especially in the two-wheelers, just coming up very strongly especially from the two uh, rural side. Uh, I think Hero uh, came up with a comment saying that they are seeing very strong demand from the rural. So there are two uh, positive events likely to happen. One, I think if the rural recovery happens, it will be positive for not only two-wheelers, but tractors also. The second thing is interest rate cut. And this is a big play on the interest rate cut, basically. So uh, likely to happen in the next three months, four months, what, whenever it starts off. And there is a long way to go if interest rates uh, uh, cut starts happening. So I think it's a play on both these sides. Uh, we should be invested into this sector and continue to hold it. Mm. Stay invested in the sector and uh, continue to hold it. Uh, that's what's coming through. By the way, uh, Nishal, uh, <clears throat> you know, again, we discussed PSU banks uh, earlier for a bit. But uh, the other part, which is oil companies, uh, any thoughts? Because lately, uh, at the margin, there have been... Uh, on the sell side, at least, uh, there is a little bit of caution being expressed. We had two brokers over the last few weeks uh, downgrading their ratings, recommendations, etc. IOC, HP, BP particularly. So, yeah, oil marketing companies, definitely, I think uh, it's time to take away profits. Uh, we are at the peak margins, basically, and uh, yes, oil has been benign at the moment for some time. Any event in the Middle East basically could uh, make the uh, oil run away, and uh, uh, then who knows, basically... Uh, whether they will be able to get the uh, upside in the uh, increase in the prices. So who pays for that? So I think that is the issue, basically. We are at a good place uh, at the moment. I think it's a good time to take away profits. GRMs have peaked out last quarter, so I don't see GRMs going up for them uh, in the near future. So it's a good time to take away profits in the oil, oil, uh, oil marketing companies. Uh, Nishal, we did talk about Grassim earlier, but you know the point is, what about the others? There's Asian Paints, there's Berger, there's Kansai Narulak. Uh, it'll take time for this to show up in terms of higher competition and uh, uh, market share shifts, etc. Uh, but uh, but do you think this can do damage and uh, anything actionable based on this? No, I, I told you earlier also, Prasant, basically, the only way they will attain these... Uh, 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 so first, I think Grassim will go for market share. And the market share initially, history has shown us basically the market shares will come at a lower price. And that will damage the margins for everybody. So whatever we, we may say, I think, uh, but uh, margins will get uh, compromised the whole industry. And uh, uh, that is going to create problems for uh, all the players. So I think, and Grassim is a serious uh, uh, with deep pockets. Uh, so definitely it's, it's going to go for a large market share. So I believe very clearly, saying that uh, in the next three years, Grassim would be uh, the top three player in the mark in the uh, in the country uh, in the paint industry, and uh, but at a cost of margins, and uh, the whole industry will suffer in the next two or three years. So I think uh, it's best to avoid the industry for the moment. Okay, all right. Uh, well, uh, you know we have I think a couple of minutes to go before the markets open for the day. Uh, so let's thank Nishal uh, for joining us. Have a great weekend, Nishal. Thanks for being with us on the channel.